Hey everyone, how's it going? Sentinel coming to you guys with another video, and in the last video, you guys, if you're following along, we pretty much got done stripping the entire electrical harness off the motor, and what I got going on now is I'm just doing a couple of other small preparations, getting the motor ready to be installed into the truck, and I'm just doing a couple of things that, uh, you know, it'd be a lot easier to do with the motor sitting right here in front of me as opposed to the motor sitting installed in the truck. For example, being uh, I did the EGR delete, and that entails removing these two bolts on the passenger side exhaust manifold. Now, as luck would have it, I ended up snapping this lower one off, which wasn't a big deal. I was able to re-drill it and tap it, so we're good to go there. But it was a lot easier to do, you know, drill and tap the threads out with the motor sitting here as opposed to it in the truck. Right, so as far as deleting the EGR valve goes, all I ended up doing was taking the flange that used to be on the end of this pipe here, and this is what bolted up to the passenger side exhaust manifold. And I ended up just taking this flange off here, sticking a plug in there and welding it shut. So all I gotta do now is get a gasket for it and then bolt this puppy into place over here just like so. And we're good to go there. Now, as far as this other portion that used to go into the intake manifold, doing a little bit of reading online and that can be easily plugged by just going to any auto parts store and getting a freeze plug, a one and three eighths freeze plug. Um, I don't recall the exact part number uh, offhand, but I'll put it down in the corner here but yeah, all you gotta do is go to the auto parts store, literally, I think they're like 88 cents to a dollar and just put a little dab of RTV in there and tap it in there and boom, that's pl that's plugged off. Then you gotta go about getting it, uh, the EGR tuned out of your computer once you get your, your engine tuned, but anyway, that's how I went about deleting my EGR. I did it the, uh, the hillbilly cheap way. Now they make like nice kits that, inc that include like a nice, you know, machined billet cap for the you know exhaust and a little cap for the intake but you know we ain't rich over here so anyway that's how i went about doing the uh egr delete so figured i'd include that uh, another thing i wanted to do made sure i get done before i put the motor in was these exhaust collectors here now for whatever reason when the guy pulled the engine and trans out of the truck you know he could have and should have left like another six inches on this exhaust here and what that would have done was left the oxygen sensors and the oxygen sensor bungs in, in place. But no, he ended up cutting the exhaust real short here. So I'm going to have to either go to a junkyard and find some new collectors that have the oxygen sensors already in them. Or, you know, your other option is to, you know, pay an exhaust shop to fab up a new exhaust and, in, and include uh, oxygen sensor bungs. But, you know, if you're trying to do this on a budget, that's just going to end up costing you more money than... You ever anticipated so I'm pretty much going to do the junkyard route but um, as you can see here I paid hell getting these these bolts off here I had to cut two out of the three of them off because exhaust bolts like I said they're always a bitch they're just they're heated to extreme temperatures while they're in use and then they they cool they heat they cool they're heated they're cooled heated cooled and they just pretty much just end up welding themselves into place over time so I got these, I had to get these things glowing red hot, and once I got them glowing hot, I was able to get them loose, but once I got them loose, I was only able to spin them maybe four or five times until they just started free spinning on there, so I ended up cutting the first one off, and then uh, second second thing happened over here, same difference, got about four or five turns, and I just felt it start tearing into these threads a bit, so I just cut it off and tried to save what I could before I could, so... Worst comes to worst, I'll probably just end up having to stack another nut or something on there to take up that space. But, oh well, I'm, like I said, I'm glad I did those things while the motor was sitting right here as opposed to trying to do it in the truck because that would have been a nightmare. Um, the Eagle Eye amongst you might also notice that the intake plenum has also been removed because, like I said in an earlier video, um, I'm going to be installing the motor and transmission as one complete unit. And I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna be doing it by myself. So, you know, I, com I figure combined engine and transmission probably weigh what, 400 pounds or whatever. And the thing's gonna be hanging from a cherry picker by a single hook. So it's gonna be swinging and doing all this and that. The last thing I need for it to do is, you know, the plastic intake manifold to bump into the firewall of the truck and end up costing me another, you know, 150 bucks or whatever a intake costs at a junkyard these days, so. Work smarter, not harder. There's only eight bolts to remove and it's just gonna make life easier. Was it unnecessary? Probably, but like I said, it was only eight bolts to remove and it's not gonna hurt, so 
I chose to go ahead and remove it. So it's been pretty much raining here all week long, so not much I can do other than this little stuff here. Um, but yeah, just making preparations to get the motor put into the truck. Um, God, those exhaust bolts were a bitch right there. Luckily, there were no casualties on the passenger side, though, as far as getting those ones off. Those ones came off with no fuss, no muss. But yeah, we're getting close, you guys. Uh, stick around. Next time we got some nice weather, this thing's going to be going into the truck. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you then.